Hey everyone, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. In this week's video, we're going to be taking a look at high RPM motors for radio controlled cars. Is it absolutely necessary to use these high RPM motors for radio controlled top speed run cars? Well, when we're talking about these high RPM motors, we're really looking at motors that can deliver over 60,000 RPM, more like 70 to 90,000 RPM. Let's jump into our very first question and that is, are those high RPM motors the only way to go for top speed run car guys? Well, the quick and easy answer there is absolutely not. We can look into motors that don't have quite the same RPM maximum as these motors that we're speaking about today. And this is boils down from our next question, which is what is truly the most important to us? Well, ultimately what we're interested in for a brushless motor on these top speed run cars is power. We want to make sure we can maximize the amount of power and it doesn't matter how we get to that value as long as we find a pathway that leads us to more power so that we can get more speed. And speaking of power, we got a few or a couple equations here on the board that describe power and define it for us. This is the one that you're probably most interested in. It has appeared on the channel here before. Horsepower is equivalent to torque multiplied by RPM divided by this factor of 5252 to make all the units work out. And if you look at the metric version of this, definitely something that I think is a lot more simple and makes a lot more sense. Power in watts is equal to torque multiplied by the rotational speed, where the rotational speed here needs to be in radians per second. Now, if we go back to that equation that we have been familiarized with here, the big things that are going to increase the amount of power for us is the amount of torque that we have in this equation as well as the amount of RPM. Now when we're looking at a brushless motor class of let's say a certain size, if you carefully look at the amount of torque that you can get out from let's say a low KV, a middle end KV value versus a high KV value, all of those torque values here that go into our equation are the exact same. It doesn't matter about the KV of that specific motor. What we're really saying here is that if you do compare two motors of the same size weight and specifications there with a different KV, they produce the exact same amount of torque. If we know that the amount of torque that we have available cannot be increased in that specific motor by changing KV, for example, we now know that this is not going to come into the equation. And if we want to increase the amount of power in that particular motor, what we really need to focus our efforts on is RPM. And this is what motor manufacturers do. They focus on the amount of RPM available to us and then they're able to increase that by changing some specific uh, materials within the motor, specifically on the rotor, and that allows for more power because this is what our equation tells us. We increase this if it's 60,000 RPM is the outgoing RPM, our new RPM maximum of 90,000 RPM, regardless of torque being the exact same, is going to give us that increased horsepower. And if you look at certain types of racing applications out there, such as F1 racing, you can even look at go-karting or your typical sport bike bike or racing bikes, those all have high RPM output type engines to really fit the definition of what kind of performance they're looking for. All those guys want to go fast, they want to be the fastest, and this is the approach that they do take. Now that we've gone through that, let's go through some advantages and disadvantages of high RPM brushless motors. The first one is the exact reason why we would want to use high RPM brushless motors for our top speed run RC cars. And that's because we're gonna get a higher power output from those motors versus the specific size of our brushless motor. What we're ultimately interested in is just this part primarily. A high power output is exactly what we want. There are larger motors that can fit into our applications, but whether or not they are larger or smaller, we're looking for the amount of power output that we can get. And anytime you look at a lot of these high RPM brushless motors, the amount of power that they pack in that small little form factor is quite substantial, and that is very good for all of us to be able to capitalize on. So that is our definite big advantage here when it comes to looking at these high RPM brushless motors. Now on to a, a disadvantage here. One of the disadvantages is that gearing in an RC car 
may actually need to be customized or custom. We actually found this when we looked at the Limitless V2. We had to use the calc sheet that we have on the Patreon website to go through the math and ultimately determine what kind of gearing we would need. We could not use stock gearing. We actually had to alter stock gearing, both the pinion as well as the spur gear. We had to swap those out to something different than what is offered by the manufacturer of that specific vehicle. Let's now jump over to another advantage here. And this one is definitely definitely one of a more subtle type and that is higher gear ratios here because of the higher RPM potential of the motor gives us a couple very subtle advantages and one of those advantages is the reduced cogging effect because the motor actually has to rotate more than it would if it was a lower RPM motor based off of the gear ratios that we have to use within our radio control vehicle we get less of a rollout with the car the car is going to travel less distance for every one rotation of that motor and because this is happening, the ESC is going to have an easier time figuring out where this brushless motor is if it is a sensorless motor, thus reducing the cogging effect. And then when it comes to braking, if we have a very low gear ratio, such as the 4 to 1, I actually had this, my very first high speed 100 mile per hour radio control car, probably back in 2010, 11, 12, in that time era there it had a very low gearing because it was a very low kv value and i suffered from braking when it came to like that slow speed 0 to 20 miles per hour 0 to 30 kilometers per hour in that range it would not brake all that well and it struggled having a different gear ratio there can definitely help and make braking easier because that motor is going to be turning faster even at those slower speeds and if we look at the second disadvantage that we have here up on the board, this one says a higher motor cost. And this is primarily due to the mechanical materials that have to be put in place on the rotor to make that rotor stronger to be able to handle the higher RPM. We're not limited by voltage on any brushless motor. Where the limit for voltage actually comes in is because we cannot overspin that brushless motor. That is the primary reason why we need better materials, which drives up the cost cost there for us to get up to those high RPM maximum thresholds. Let's read off the last advantage that we have here on the board. Higher KV values essentially allow us to avoid using high voltages, which is a good advantage to us because they essentially operate the same way that any other brushless motor would operate. We're still able to use voltages between 4 to 8S in order to operate our top speed run cars. And that really is a good thing for us to not have to go in and stretch ourselves to 10 or even 12 S. And the last disadvantage here up on the board deals with bearings and wear and tear. Now we would expect that a bearing that has to go through more RPM type abuse is going to have some wear and tear on it, leading to potential failures, maybe a little bit quicker than your typical motor. I personally have not encountered this. However, I don't have a lot of hours on any of my high speed RPM type motors. Well guys, that pretty well does it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot. See you in the next one.